Hello, today I'm going to give you a whistle-stop tour of my uh, configuration in Cubase using Control Room uh, for recording audio and video. So on my channel, One Man and His Songs, I do two different things. I write songs, uh, which involve uh, my wife Pauline singing on them, and I make videos about those songs, which requires me to record via the microphone into OBS, which is this software here, which is where I capture and mix together audio and video. Now the problem is that OBS can't hear Cubase. Cubase is um, uh, uses an ASIO driver at its core and OBS can't hear ASIO devices. Now there are ways that you can contort yourself to make it work uh, by giving OBS access to the ASIO driver and have Cubase use like a virtual driver. But I found this secondary solution that was just completely perfect, but it took me quite a while to actually get there. So I'm gonna go through all of those steps today and tell you how I did it. The first thing that we need to do is configure the audio device itself. And this is very dependent on what equipment you own. So I'm gonna talk about my um, device, which is a Focusrite 18i8, and just basically extract out of it you know, the functionality that you can. So we can see all the inputs and outputs here. Inputs one and two are currently marked as inactive. That's like really, really important. Cubase is not inherently interested in these inputs one and two. It's a loopback system designed to help OBS hear the sound. We'll deal with that a little bit more shortly. Inputs three and four are used and they're really important. Input three is my microphone and input four is a mono input from my guitar. So I have um, a valve amp, which connects into um, an attenuator and then into the focus right. So input four is the, 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 the live feed from my guitar. I have an optional stereo input on five and six, but for today's purposes, we don't really need to worry about them. And that's it for your inputs. As far as outputs are concerned, I've got two stereo pairs of outputs. One and two go to my hi-fi speakers. Three and four go back in to these inputs one and two. Now the reason for that is because that's what OBS hears. As I'm talking to you now, this audio input capture is hearing me talk to you, but this microphone is coming through Cubase. If I play some synth notes, you can see that that input is going into OBS. There we go. So it's taking the feed of both my microphone and any output from Cubase, and it's all mixing it together. If I didn't have this output pair coming from outputs three and four, back into my focus right, you wouldn't be able to hear any of that. It's a weird thing about hardware setup um, that the way that you get around this ASIO problem is that inputs one and two on your input device, um, OBS does hear, doesn't hear anything else. If I plugged exactly this into outputs six and seven, eight, nine, it doesn't matter, OBS won't hear them, but it does hear inputs one and two. Analog one and two, my focus right USB audio is picked up by OBS. So that little loop there is how I'm able to record this stuff without requiring an ASIO driver. Great stuff. So I've configured my audio device that it, so that it's capable of doing the job. But now in order to actually get all of this functionality working, I'm gonna need the help of the control room. So we go into audio connections and ordinarily where you'd see loads of interesting stuff in inputs and outputs, there's very, very little. The only input I have as far as this tab is con concerned is my guitar. So that's like old school going straight in as an input. I have no outputs at all. Um, it's a little bit weird. It's a kind of a quirk of the way the control room is configured, but you have to have an output bus in order to have this slider here. You know, if you want to control the volume on your output bus, you do need to create an output, but can you see it's not connected to anything? and then all of the good stuff is in the control room tab. Let's deal with the loopback first because we've already touched on it. This output three and four comes back into the control room 
and I've created this thing called a queue. When you click add channel, you have the option to create these queues. So I've created a queue, called it loopback, and that's actually what you're listening to me on now. Q1, it's here. If I disengage that and click mix, which is the standard output from Cubase, then you won't hear me. Here we go. And then I'm back again. Then I need to be able to talk to you. So I'm going to do that with my microphone. So you saw earlier that um, input three was labeled mic in. That's what this is here. So when you when you add channels in control room, you're allowed to, you, know, you have the option to create a talkback channel, which is what I've done here. It's mono, it's connected to my microphone. And so I now have the ability via this green talkback button uh, to turn it on and off whenever I want. And that means basically that I can do whatever I want over the top of my Cubase mix. So I'm playing the synthesizer and talking to you at the same time. Now don't forget, all the time that I'm doing this, I'm also recording this in OBS. So when I do this and talk to you, and I'm also recording, that data is going to two different locations. Um, here's my test one that I did earlier. So I can demo this very quickly, record able my vocal track. I've got my synth track already set up. Press go, enter record. So I'm pressing the keyboard. I'm also talking to you, you can, you can see the signal. And all of that is also getting routed to OBS. When you're watching this video, you're watching the data that I just recorded in OBS. So it went two different directions simultaneously. Now let's say I'm in the middle of writing a song and I want to play you some music. So let's get this magnificent little ditty over here that I created and just get that looping. What a masterpiece. So if I want to talk over the top of that, I can. But if I want to play you a song without the sound of my kind of, you know, glasses banging on the table and all of that stuff, then I can disengage talk back. So the ability to disconnect my microphone from the, with the rest of the output from Cubase is absolutely wonderful. And that's primarily the main reason I use the control room. If I didn't need this talkback facility at all, you can accomplish pretty much all of this with standard track monitoring. The problem is that if I want to talk to you using old style track monitoring, if I had other stuff soloed at the time and accidentally unmuted or unmonitored the wrong track, it all goes horribly wrong. It's actually really difficult to talk over the top of a song that's playing because in my videos I talk about the songs and unmute and mute stuff and I need to make sure that my microphone track is enabled all of the time. Well, I don't have to do any of that worry now. The, the talkback is completely distinct from the song mix. It also means over on the inserts tab that I have the opportunity to add um, effects. Now I have a really noisy room. I've got a fan whirring away on my PC over here and all sorts of other stuff. If I disengage the, the, the noise, the denoise, it's pretty bad. So I actually have that permanently engaged, a little bit of a CPU overhead, but there's not much I can do. And you can see I've got a de and a tiny little bit of compression and EQ just to kind of warm the sound up a little bit. So that's actually my default sound. When Pauline sings songs for me, she actually sings through this channel and all of that is baked in. So every now and again, what I'll do is basically just go into my denoise and have it relearn the, 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 the room's current noise configuration. So I'll just do it now. And as soon as that line settles down, I can take it out of learn mode and then that just quietens. However, whatever the, the noise profile of the room is at any given time, I can always teach it to, um, to RX. Finally, I need to make sure that my audio device itself is properly configured. So here are my output routings. And it's actually really straightforward. Once you've got everything else sorted, this is super easy. Everything goes playback one, two. So all of my outputs are only interested in channels one and two. Now the signal coming out of outputs three and four is pretty hot. 
So I actually have it running at minus 10 dB. That's why this one is turned down. This is the control slider uh, feeding into the front of my audio device. And if I didn't have that turned down, see this level over here, I try to, when I'm recording audio, I try to make sure oh, that my voice doesn't dip too much into the red. And I need to balance that with the keyboards. So I try to make sure that my voice is slightly louder than the song that's playing in the background. Sometimes I do get it wrong and my mixes go bad, but my master control um, from all of that is set from here. So if I turn that on, turn it back up, you get louder and louder. And this is OBS basically taking this feed. So I just worked out empirically that minus 10 is about the sweet spot to get a nice healthy signal into OBS with a little bit of headroom on my slider here that I can control. You know, if it's a tiny bit hot, I can control it from here rather than having to open the, the focus right control panel. But other than that, it's a very straightforward setup. There's nothing remotely interesting on the inputs. These are my four front of box inputs. You can see analog one and two are line inputs. So again, this is the loopback coming from three and four. Here's my microphone, which I have the air option um, permanently on. So this is just like a focus right thing that just adds a little bit of extra dimension to the microphone. And this is my guitar input. So that comes directly from the, um, the UA aux. And again, I have that set at bang on 12 o'clock. You know, the, 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 the input control on the front of my box is set to 12 o'clock. And then if I need to adjust the, the amp, if the, the sound that I'm using out of my amp is a little bit hot, you know, I've got that, that control there. Here I am in my office. It's not a recording studio. I don't need to send monitor mixes to, you know, all the various different musicians in a band or whatnot, but I do have a set of like, idiosyncratic requirements that were actually quite difficult to overcome. OBS was obviously the big fly in the ointment, not being able to hear Cubase. The day I first configured everything and turned it on and got OBS running and spent days trying to figure out why it couldn't hear Cubase. Once I discovered that there was a problem here, I then embarked on this process of discovery. And I did want at one point go down the, the voice meter route um, using virtual drivers. And like I say, the lag was just too much for me to bear. And in this system, I have no latency. Um, I think my, my standard um, lag is about six milliseconds, if I remember rightly. So six and a half milliseconds, basically no latency. So I get to talk to you. If I want to play the guitar, I can do it live. And I've just got like no issues in any respect. OBS takes a secondary feed and is perfectly happy with what, it, with, um, with what it's given. So I hope you found that video useful. And if you did, please do hit the like button. I have a, a Patreon account down, um, down below. If you're interested in becoming a patron, that would be completely awesome. Uh, thanks very much for watching.